Hey, it's number one best-selling author and motivational speaker, Eric Qualman. And on today's Super 7 Tips, I am super excited because it's my good friend, Sean Acker. And he is the man that's all about happiness. And if you're wondering what does happiness have to do with work, it has everything to do with work. So I can't wait to share these seven tips from Sean with you. Here's how we get to health. We need to reverse the formula for happiness and success. In the past three years, I've traveled to 45 different countries, working with schools and companies in the midst of an economic downturn. And what I found is that most companies and schools follow a formula for success, which is this. If I work harder, I'll be more successful. And if I'm more successful, then I'll be happier. That undergirds most of our parenting styles, our managing styles, the way that we motivate our behavior. And the problem is it's scientifically broken and backwards for two reasons. First, every time your brain has a success, you just change the goalpost of what success looked like. You got good grades, now you have to get better grades. You got into a good school, now you have to get a better school. You got a good job, now you have to get a better job. You hit your sales target, we're gonna change your sales target. And if happiness is on the opposite side of success, your brain never gets there. What we've done is we've pushed happiness over the cognitive horizon as a society. And that's because we think we have to be success successful, then we'll be happier. But the real problem is our brains work in the opposite order. If you can raise somebody's level of positivity in the present, then their brain experiences what we now call a happiness advantage, which is your brain at positive performs significantly better than it does at negative, neutral, or stressed. Your intelligence rises, your creativity rises, your energy levels rise. In fact, what we found is that every single business outcome improves. Your brain at positive is 31% more productive than it, your brain at negative, neutral, or stressed. You're 37% better at sales. Doctors are 19% faster, more accurate at coming up with the correct diagnosis when positive instead of negative, neutral, or stressed, which means we can reverse the formula. If we can find a way of becoming positive in the present, then our brains work even more successfully as we're able to work harder, faster, and more intelligently. What we need to be able to do is to reverse this formula so we can start to see what our brains are actually capable of. Because dopamine, which floods into your system when you're positive, has two functions. Not only does it make you happier, it turns on all the learning centers in your brain, allowing you to adapt to the world in a different way. We found that there are ways that you can train your brain to be able to come more positive. In just a two minute span of time, done for 21 days in a row, we can actually rewire your brain, allowing your brain to actually work more optimistically and more successfully. We've done these things in research now in every single company that I've worked with, getting them to write down three new things that they're grateful for for 21 days in a row, three new things each day, and at the end of that, their brain starts to retain a pattern of scanning the world not for the negative, but for the positive first. Journaling about one positive experience you've had over the past 24 hours allows your brain to relive it. Exercise teaches your brain that your behavior matters. We find that meditation allows your brain to get over the cultural ADHD that we've been creating by trying to do multiple tasks at once. It allows our brains to focus on the task at hand. And finally, random acts of kindness or conscious acts of kindness, we get people when they open up their inbox to write one positive email, praising or thanking somebody in their social support network. And by doing these activities and by training your brain, just like we train our bodies, what we found is we can reverse the formula for happiness and success, and in doing so, not only create ripples of positivity, but create a real revolution. strangers all waiting for a plane. They don't, know, they don't even know they're part of an experiment. They're just waiting at their gate for their plane. You introduce an undercover researcher, stand in the middle of the 15 people in a five meter radius. Undercover researcher just begins to bounce nervously in place. Tap his foot impatiently on the ground and look at his watch repeatedly with a frown on his face. Within two minutes of waiting for that plane, depending on the study worldwide, on average, seven to 12 of the 15 individuals will unconsciously start shifting nervously in place and or tapping their foot on the ground and or looking at their watch more than four times in a two minute span of time. If you don't believe me, this is one of the experiments you can try out yourself the next time you get on a plane. <laughs> if you want to spread stress and negativity to the people on your plane. <laughs> Which is why I always do this one at a different gate. But the reason, <laughs> No one laughs at that joke. You guys are amazing. <laughs> That's my favorite joke. Um, <laughs> now I don't even know what to do. I didn't, wasn't expecting. <laughs> now I have to start over. Um, when I was seven, no. Um, <laughs> what I love about this experiment is because it shows us not only do smiles and yawns spread, but it turns out negativity, stress, uncertainty, and anxiety, we can pick up like secondhand smoke. You don't even have to be the one smoking to have the negative health implications. The same thing is true with how other people's brains process your world. Now, as soon as I start to tell people, which by the way, I've seen over and over again in changes that have been occurring in the political and economic landscape, 
almost every dinner I have with my friends devolves into all this conversation about all the negative that's going on and the problems we feel and the stresses we feel, and it starts to spread even to my little three-year-old who's sitting there listening to us talk about it as well. What we've been finding in the midst of that is that if we leave that believing that our behavior doesn't matter, we leave paralyzed in the midst of that situation. What we need to do is exactly why you're here, which is to be activated. What we've been looking for are are there ways... I think all this research we're starting to see actually shows us we were studying you wrong. As I look at you now, there's no organic material connecting us in this society, in our country, in our world. There's no wires connecting any of our brains, so we study you as individuals. Here's your depression. Here's your engagement score. Here's your intelligence and memory and strengths. And all that's true, but it misses out on the most important thing. As you know, it misses out on how beautiful the human organism actually is. We're not wired together but our brains are designed to be wirelessly connected through these mirror systems. It's the biological underpinnings of why you do what you're doing. It's compassion and sympathy and understanding that connect us so that others' emotions aren't, we're not immune to them, we're actually connected to them, which means we don't process the world, we actually co-process the world with other people. We have the power to actually change the reality we see around us. Yeah. And one of the things we've talked about is that that oftentimes we just feel like this world makes my happiness or not. Like if things are not going well, it's because of what the world is giving me. It's always about like a powerlessness compared to our genes or to our chemicals or to our, the, the environment. And what we're finding is that when you do a random act of kindness, it shatters that. Because what it says is, whoa, I could actually not only change my own levels of happiness, but I could change them for other people. I'm going to start writing the social script, and I'm going to write a script that causes people to be able to choose happiness better. Are there habits that take less than two minutes a day that are akin to brushing your teeth, that if you did them for a period of 21 days in a row, that you could trump your genes and even up to eight decades of experience. And that's exactly what we found. We found small little habits, something as simple as Martin Seligman found, where you write three things new that you're grateful for each day for 21 days in a row can actually move people that are continually testing as pessimists at an organization to testing as low to moderate level optimists, and that the pattern uh, exists for even six months. One of the things that I found that I love is if you write a two minute email praising or thanking one person you know, it turns out if you do that every day for a different person for 21 days. If you do it for the next three days, writing to somebody, a two minute email praising them or thanking them, you're gonna get fully addicted to it because you're gonna spend all day long thinking about how amazing you were for writing that email in the morning. <laughs> And you get these great emails back because they don't know about the two-minute rule, so they keep writing how great you are, and you're like, yep, this is the, all this is true. But 21 days later, when we ask you about your social connection, you realize you have incredibly deep social connection. The breadth, depth, and meaning in your social relationships has increased dramatically. We found that social connection is not only the greatest predictor of happiness with inside organizations, but we also found that social connection is as predictive of how long all of you will end up living as obesity, high blood pressure, or smoking. We sure fight hard against the negative, and we forget to tell people how powerful the positive can be. So what we've been looking for are, what are some very practical things that people could do to change the way that they view the world? And what we found is your brain has only a limited amount of resources to think about your world, your life, your family, what's going on that you see happening in the media. And what happens is that if our brain goes first for the negatives, your brain has literally no resources left over to scan the world for the things we're grateful for or the meaning in our life. So what we started realizing is as people were constructing this picture of reality, that there were actually multiple realities that you could construct in every moment. And then we could help people actually start to pick the most valuable reality at the time, the reality that helped move them forward and help them to either be happier or more successful or both. So for example, one of the things we have people do is a very simple activity called the advantage points technique. And what we have people do is think about something that they normally think about as frustrating or negative, like their overflowing uh, inbox with their emails or, or dirty dishes in the sink. When I talk to people about dirty dishes in the sink, they think that's the opposite of happiness. <laughs> but what we found is even within those moments, we're finding that most people, when they describe it, They'll describe things like, you know, it's a chore, it's dirty, it's constant, I can never keep up with it. Both of the, all of those different types of descriptors are negative, and it causes us to feel like we don't want to do that work, and we don't do it. We, we're slower towards doing it, and afterwards we feel frustrated that we had to go through the process. What we have people do is do something different. You can think of all those negative descriptors, but in one minute we have somebody think of every descriptor they could possibly think for that activity. 
They get one point for all the negative ones and three points for any positive ones. Mm. So about halfway through that minute with dirty dishes, for example, people start thinking things like, it's an opportunity to feel productive or it's an opportunity to show love to my spouse. And what happens is if we have those multiple visions, if we could view something like doing dirty dishes in the sink, if we could do dishes in the sink as an opportunity to show love, what happens is not only do we feel happier through the process, your brain actually has more energy for doing it. You're motivated towards it. When you finish, you actually feel rejuvenated instead of tired. So simply changing the way that we think about things to choose the positive path actually helps even the most negative tasks become something that can create happiness. Let me just give you two and use these as springboards for thinking about one behavioral change you want to try out for the next 21 days. Just one change. Uh, I want to watch less television, but uh, every time I come home from work, I'd be tired. You know, I'd come home from teaching and be exhausted, so I'd press the on button on the remote control and then I'd be, uh, uh, you know, watching The Office after coming home from The Office. So what I did was the average American, according to Google, watches five to seven hours of tev television a day, which I mentioned in China and they were very impressed with this. Um, <laughs> and uh, so what I did was I played the same trick my brain played upon me with the guitar. I took a stopwatch and walked the batteries from the remote control 20 seconds away to my bedroom and then watched what happened. The next couple days I sat down on the couch, pressed the on button on the remote control, usually repeatedly, and be like, oh, I hate that I do these experiments. <laughs> I'm like, where, where is the batteries? And I'm like, oh, they're just 20 seconds away in my bedroom. I timed it. It's only 20 seconds away. Should I go get them? And my brain would go, no, it takes forever to go get those batteries. Let's do something else. I'd be like, okay. And so I had a book that was sitting right there. I'd work right there. I had a journal. I had my guitar. I had my phone so I could call my friends and meet up with them for dinner instead of talking to my friends on the television. Um, and so as a result of that, I dramatically decreased the amount of television I watched. In subsequent studies, you don't even need 20 seconds, even though 20 seconds, we all have 20 seconds. You can just unplug the Wii, Xbox, or PlayStation, and you can dramatically decrease how much television uh, and video games a kid will play, because as they walk past it, they're like, oh, I don't want to plug that back in. You <laughs> can make these decisions all the time. Think about the decisions you want your client to be making. How can you make those bad decisions that they keep making more difficult for them to do in their mind, mentally. But also, if there's good ones, if you want to add something, which I hope what you leave w with, because it's got to have effect not only upon you and your business, but upon your clients as well. Walk away with one positive behavioral habit and figure out how to make it easier. So I want to start exercising every morning, which might be one that several of you try. But every morning I wake up and say, do I want to exercise? No. Where are my clothes? Where are my shoes? Where am I going to work out? By that point, I'm falling back asleep. So what I did was I just went to sleep in my gym clothes. Um, <laughs> my mom wonders why I'm single. Um, <laughs> they were clean. I don't do it anymore. And I had shoes right next to the bed. And I had a workout routine. And I knew where I was going to work out. I dropped the activation energy, the initial investment of energy necessary to start the task, by 80%. All I had to do was roll out of bed and put my feet right into the shoes. And then I could exercise. And as a result of that, I created a life habit of exercise, and now I don't even have to think about that in the morning, um, uh, you know, that it's something I just naturally do and miss it when I don't do it. So what if somebody's having a particularly challenging reality that they can't find many positive things about, or a person in their life that they have to deal with that is very difficult? What would be your advice then? Well, I think the first thing to realize is that uh, that happens to everyone, right? <laughs> we've all got that person in our life that's that, you know, Debbie Downer, that negative person, or we've got those, pe those problems in our life that seem intractable. What we found is that our brain can focus on those, but when we do that, we're actually ignoring other parts of our reality. We might be frustrated about one person in our, our life. It might be a boss or it might be somebody that we work with, but we might be ignoring the fact that we're you know, so in love with the person that we're married to or that we have tons of family and friends that we can always connect with. What happens is that that negative person can become that entire person's reality instead of realizing it's just one part of it. So what we have people do is focus on those things that they're grateful. Your brain can't do two things at once. So the first step is to build up resilience by realizing, by, by practicing the gratitude, thinking about the things that are positive and, and helping your brain to remember that there are incredible parts of your reality that you might not be remembering at the current moment. 
But the second thing is that we started to realize that a lot of people thought that negative people only impact us, but we forget about the impact we can have upon them. Mm. So part of what we do is in the midst of a negative uh, uh, an event or a negative person, if it's an event, we try and think about ways we could actually intentionally create a better reality. So look to see if there are habits you could be doing that could cause you to feel more positive before going into that negative event. Or if you're going to meet up with a negative person, before you go in to meet up with them or you know, before coming to talk to your boss, make sure you prime yourself with a, uh, a positive picture of your family or do something for two minutes, watch a funny YouTube clip that you know is going to make you laugh. Because what happens is when we smile, when we laugh, when we're grateful, our body completely changes. We actually... Uh, it, it lowers not only the sympathetic nervous system response, which is the stress, the fight or flight response, and actually cause your body to re rebuild and become stronger. So that when you come in to meet with that negative person, your positivity can actually overwhelm their negativity and you can actually start to change that reality to a more positive one. Ah. <laughs> Woo, let's do it. All right, ready? Yep. Sorry. <laughs>